So um, I'll let uh, our panelists introduce themselves, as they'll do a better job than I will. So Jean-Marc, do you want to give yourself an introduction and let people know who you work for and who your customers are? Okay, thanks for inviting me. And uh, I'm responsible for the you know, Appim platform uh, at La Poste, BSCC, so it's a branch dealing with you know, logistics. Uh, La Poste is a big company in France. We, we are 200,000 people and dealing with logistics, banking, uh, digital services. But uh, for my part, it's, uh, I'm dealing with logistics and uh, uh, more and more, you know, new services, digital services, and uh, we, I will explain maybe why uh, we have uh, an API strategy. John? Uh, and, um, thank you, too, to <laughs> inviting me. So I'm Joanne Bollet. Uh, I'm Integration Platform Manager uh, for SASEM. SASEM is a French company uh, operating in the uh, music industry. It is, uh, so SASEM is an acronym, it means uh, Society of Authors, Composers, Publishers of Music. Its main uh, role is to uh, manage music copyrights, to, um, to collect royalties from uh, those who, who distribute music and to um, distribute these royalties to those who create music. And to make it simple, our, our goal is to ensure that uh, so the music creators are fairly retributed for the usage of their music. Brilliant. Well, thank you, and thank you for coming and joining us on stage today. So I'll jump straight in. So the, as per the, the title of the, um, uh, the session, um, we'll go through uh, Jean-Marc first. So what's, um, how have APIs been used in your organisation to either deliver innovation and growth uh, and what's the sort of the key aspect that they've helped with? Yeah, um, a few years ago, our CTO has decided to, you know, to set up and, uh, and define an uh, architecture based on API first. And so uh, <coughs> he has decided to, to create a team dealing with uh, the Appin platform. So uh, to, uh, we have been building a new platform uh, with you know, uh, administrator to, uh, to manage this platform. And uh, while developers were well, developed uh, Android of new services that uh, will be managed with this platform, you know, and uh, so so we uh, a few years uh, after we had, you know, uh, a few Android services to manage in this platform. So so we have to to scale. We have to to add you know governance to uh, to uh, to manage all these new services and new APIs. Cool. Thank you. And John, how, uh, how have APIs been used in uh, your industry to innovate and deliver the services for your customers? Um, a bit like uh, La Poste, we, um, a few years back, we decided to create a transverse integration platform. Um, and uh, we chose a WSO2 API manager for the API management part. And we deployed uh, several gateways on, uh, several, on uh, both on premises and uh, on our AWS cloud provider. Uh, we deployed uh, internal gateways for internal integrations and uh, B2C and B2B gateways for external use case to integrate with our customers and with our partners. And uh, it enabled us to. Uh, to, um, to ease the, our digital transformation. We could uh, easily uh, provide new services to our members, for example. Now they can connect to the web portal and they can manage their uh, musical works. They can uh, manage their, um, their concert dates, their set list. Um, also, now we provide um, APIs. We, we could uh, um, construct uh, partnerships with, um, we, we, uh, provi by providing uh, B2B APIs. For example, uh, we, um, we created uh, APIs for, uh, for, music, for um, universal music to ease the processing of uh, publishing agreements. Thank you very much. So you both mentioned that your, um, your CTOs, your senior manager, decided on a, a, an API strategy, a integration strategy. Um, do you feel there, you know, that strategy is aligned fully with the business? Because that's something that's been a challenge uh, in the past. And, um, 
you know, uh, or have you had challenges doing that? So, Johan, if you want to go first on that one. Yeah, so, um, a few years back, uh, we decided to reorganize the at SASM uh, to um, to organize uh, things uh, follow by following uh, safe methodology, which is a scaled uh, agile framework. So now we are organized uh, in uh, uh, agile uh, restraints that are focused on uh, delivering uh, business value, and these trains, these the teams that uh, that are in these trains uh, use a platform and uh, doesn't have to to manage the complexity behind this platform. So the, that's our way of doing platformless. There is a team that is uh, in charge of the platform and that uh, gives uh, APIs and tools, uh, well-documented APIs to the, to the trains uh, to, to ease their, their, uh, the, the usage of the platform. And regarding API management, it, uh, we had some uh, challenges in doing that because um, it was meaning to give access to the to the API management to developers, so so developers could uh, themselves uh, create uh, APIs uh, and publish and deploy even in production. So, but still, um, we needed to to have some. Uh, some governance and to uh, ensure also that there is a, a good level of security. So we had to, we gave access to the developers, but at the same time we we enabled some uh, approval workflows and some uh, notifications in order to control uh, what is done on the API management platform. Brilliant, thank you. And Jamal, have you? Do you feel that your IT strategy for API first is aligned with the business and what they're trying to do as well? Yeah, actually, we two two strategies. The first one is internal. It's like like SASM is to to become you know more agile and to uh, to let developers you know focusing on on business and uh, and managing technical points you know, with a special dedicated teams. And so, yeah, we, 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 what we, what, what's taken, you know, uh, month now takes weeks, you know, to, to be developed and to be deployed. So, so we have addressed this first strategy, uh, internally. And the business uh, wanted also to open the information system uh, to offer new, you know, digital services to our partners. So this second strategy was to secure, you know, uh, opening the, the information system by, by uh, offering APIs you know, uh, to our partners. So we have reached this strategy and we have now you know, embedded you know, LAPOS services in a partner information system. So that's, that's a good, good thing for, for business. Yeah. Brilliant, so you know, that links into a lot we've been talking about, the, uh, being able to use those new business models and uh, things. So were there any challenges early, you know, is this been going on for a few years at, at LaPost? Were there any challenges early on integrating that sort of IT with the business, or was that a smooth, uh, a, a, a smooth process? Yeah, the challenges were with this internal you know, strategy of acquisition of the information system. We have faced you know a workload, you know, integrating you know a producer of API, consumer of API, because. Uh, we did, we we have maybe a little difference uh, with SASM because we we didn't provide you know self service you know feature uh, we 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 wanted to control you know uh, what was done in terms of you know uh, publishing and consuming for security reason mainly and so we have we have faced you know workload important workload for the administration team and at the beginning of the you know the, the period because we are, we are hundreds of services to integrate, actually. Uh, the second, maybe, challenge was to, to scale so the platform, because uh, we, we, we had Android of new services, new API, with uh, uh, traffic growing fast, fastly, you know. So, so the second challenge was to scale the, the platform, and uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we had built you know, a robust uh, platform because we have centralized all the you know all the services, so obviously you, the, the platform needs to be really uh, robust. Yeah, 
And maybe the third your challenge was to, uh, to, to, to follow the trend of uh, the different version of WSO2. So, you, so you, you, we need to, um, you know, to, uh, to upgrade the platform uh, for security reasons, for support reasons. But uh, uh, we, we need not to affect the consumers. So this is a little bit tricky sometimes. Yeah, cool. And John, in the you know in SASIM, um, obviously it sounds like you've got a very streamlined process there. What challenges did you face getting to that? And you know, uh, was there any sort of um, issues between the sort of the business and the IT strategy requirements on what you were doing building that platform? Uh, so I mentioned earlier the fact that we were going uh, self-service. Uh, to, towards the self-service API management, so I already uh, told uh, rapidly about the, the issues we had um, on giving uh, access to the platform, uh, but at the same time uh, controlling what is done. Um, also, we faced some challenging in uh, building uh, a hybrid integration platform. Um, so our goal was to have ex exactly the same uh, features regarding API management, both on-premise and uh, on uh, our cloud provider. So we, we managed to, to deploy uh, um, WSO2 Manager on different, uh, on, uh, on different uh, architecture, uh, to, to manage different architecture deployments, both on VMs and on, and on uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster. And so uh, it was a bit of a challenge to to have uh, to um, to understand how to to manage all this, uh, but once it is, uh, <laughs> we we uh, we have uh, the the level of understanding. Yeah. Now it it runs uh, smoothly. <laughs> nice, good to hear it. Um, you know, we in some of the other talks they talked about the, you know the platform being a product, and I know uh, from my experience at HMRC that <clears throat> there's a lot of demands from developers. Um, so do you, you know, do you get a lot of uh, requirements from developers to improve the platform or evolve the platform in that space, or how do you handle that? Um, yeah, um, so since we are, um, we use a safe methodology, uh, so we are uh, organized in uh, agile restraints and uh, in product uh, teams, uh, so we we collect uh, requirements. It's one of our, of our main task. Uh, me as a product owner of the integration platform, uh, I I must check uh, the needs of the of the developers, and uh, they uh, they often uh, contact me to to give some uh, new improvement ideas and or. Uh, some uh, frustrations uh, that, <laughs> so, yeah. and uh, we, we try to to see uh, how we can improve the, the product. <laughs> Taking that approach that the platform, as mentioned, is a product itself. It's not. Yeah. It's not a, a finished uh, deployment. Cool. Um, so, <clears throat> thinking about sort of um, any sort of future requirements, and go back to you, Jean Marc. You know, is there any plans to sort of utilize the platform to sort of innovate further in your space? Um, in the future, uh, actually, uh, <coughs> we, we 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 try to 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 be platformless. Uh, uh, actually, already <laughs> for for our developers, uh, they, they ask we have been asked to you know to have a, a workflow you know uh, to integrate you know uh, APIs uh, and, and new uh, consumers. And so, um, the, the, yeah, the, the, the future is for us to have a, a platform we, uh, which can provide security, but also, you know, a fast integration. So, uh, and uh, probably we will uh, we'll need to, uh, to address uh, also a new deployment because we can see that uh, more and more assets are in the, in, on SaaS or on the cloud. cloud. And... Uh, so, so probably we will we'll have some, you know, uh, assets to to move to the cloud uh, as well. So, so the hybrid uh, architecture will be the future uh, for us probably. Yeah. Brilliant. And John, in the in that, you know, you've got quite an in, a, intriguing space about music attribution and uh, protecting the rights. Do you see any uh, sort of innovations coming uh, on the sort of API front in your space as well? 
Um, yeah, in the music industry, there are a lot of uh, startups uh, rising with new innovative uh, business models. So our innovation team uh, uh, identifies uh, these startups and identifies uh, what are what could be the opportunities uh, with them. Uh, so often, and as these companies are digital natives, they uh, often provide APIs. So uh, usually, we we uh, we can prototype. Uh, easily uh, by using uh, some of their, their APIs uh, and matching with uh, some of ours. And uh, yeah, uh, that's how we, and we, we try to innovate and uh, to, to build new, new partnerships. Brilliant. And Jean-Marc, obviously a very different uh, business space, but what, um, you know, um, is there anything coming from a technology perspective that you think is going to really affect how you sort of run your API platforms or the technologies align, underlying it um, coming in the future? I think, yeah, I, 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 so. Sorry, <coughs> I've spoken about uh, hybrid, uh, you know, uh, architecture. Mm. So I think APK, AP, APK uh, your, your new solution can help to develop, you know, to deploy, sorry, uh, mm. in the area where the assets are deployed as well. So this is, I think, f first, uh, uh, the first, uh, so probably, uh, yeah, trend coming. The good one is, uh, you know, that uh, with this centralized platform, we collect a lot of data. Uh, we can store this data. We can anal analyze data for, you know, security reason, for business reason, for sustainability also reason. So I think uh, that uh, AI will help probably um, to analyze uh, with this different point of view, this data. So AI probably is uh, yeah is uh, is the future is a, is a technology which will will be used. We already use machine learning, you know, to tune our APIs. So it's uh, ongoing. Yeah. All of that brilliant. And uh, John, what do you think is going to have the biggest impact coming down the line on on your business? Uh, I will say AI, AI too. <laughs> I think it's AI is everything. <laughs> not a big surprise. I think it yeah. it is disrupting uh, yeah. everything. <laughs> so uh, in the music, uh, in the music industry, uh, uh, especially in the regarding uh, creation, uh, there are more and more uh, uh, music creators that are using generative AI to create music. So we have to adapt to this fact to for the management of. Uh, of royalties, uh, with the, uh, still the, the goal to, to uh, fairly retribute uh, those who create music. Mm. And uh, there are many uh, questions about uh, <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, yeah. what AI uh, yeah. is exactly uh, in this. I can imagine that's going to be a very complex, yeah. uh, <laughs> complex space to deal with, with AI-generated music. And also, uh, inside SASM, we also have uh, identified some uh, part of our business uh, processes that uh, could uh, be uh, improved uh, with AI because we process a large amount of data, uh, all the data from the, the digital service uh, providers for, from uh, streaming uh, platforms like uh, YouTube or, or Spotify. And uh, sometimes we have uh, Problem of quality of data, and it's difficult to so to to identify uh, how we can manage the royalties. So, with AI, we could uh, I've, we could probably uh, improve uh, this, and there are projects ongoing on, on this. Brilliant! Thank you very much. Um, that's all for the questions. Uh, have we got any questions from the audience for this session? I think we're a little bit over time, but. <laughs>